Hey guys, even here, so Fuad Abiyad just held a 4 hour long podcast, it was Legion Sports Fest watch party, before the actual show started these guys were just chit chatting and they did a little Q&A, a lot of the questions in the comment sections were about Nick Walker situation, obviously. What was Fuad thinking? He can do a 4 hour long podcast live with people asking questions and never to mention about uh, Nick Walker and whatever happened there. So of course everybody was like, where is Nick Walker? What's happened with him? Is he gonna be on the podcast? So Fuad had to answer this question 4 times actually in 4 different ways and of course I got this on the video for you guys. I'm gonna play it for you and we're gonna comment on what he had to say. Check this out guys. To everyone asking about Nick, it's probably best to leave it for a bit. We'll see if he's back or not. Oh, they're asking about Nick being on the podcast. Uh, listen, I have respect for Nick for being awesome. Uh, being awesome. <laughs> I have respect for Nick for being honest. Uh, I don't wish bad for Nick at all, and I'm sure he'll be back on the podcast one day. I don't know if it'll be this week or next week or the week after, but if he wants to be on, I'm sure uh, he'll be back on. And it's wellness right now. Yeah, I knew this was wellness. It had to be. All right, so that's one answer. We have three more. First, we're gonna discuss this one. But man, I hate how Ian interrupted Fuad in the end and kept talking about whatever was happening on the live stream. Who cares if it is wellness or woman's physique or whatever? We wanna hear about Nick Walker's situation, man. Come on, Ian. I don't know. Is he really not interested in it? Or was he trying to save Fuad just to change topic because it is awkward for Fuad? I don't know. But yeah, Fuad said what he had to say. He says that Nick is going to be back on the podcast maybe not this week, maybe not next week, maybe not <laughs> the week after, but if he wants to, I'm sure he will be, that's what he says, it really sounds like that's it for Nick, as far as podcast, it sounds like Nick is done, Fu didn't want to say, no, no, I will never bring Nick Walker back on the podcast, because he's not sponsored by the hostel anymore, no, he didn't want to say that, of course he wouldn't say that, but he said, yeah, I'm sure he will be back if he wants to, maybe not this week, maybe not next, maybe never, but most likely never. So this is Nick's physique right now, that's why I'm showing you this, because this is current. As you can see, Nick looks big, he looks huge, he's getting leaner, and more importantly, he looks confident, he looks good, he looks happy. Uh, I don't know how much this whole drama situation with Fuad is affecting him, I hope he can uh, stay above it, but I'm sure it will affect him some, hopefully soon he will forget all about it, he will get a new sponsor who will support him properly. From what I heard, Raw and Rewire will not take him back, no way. And basically, from what I heard, companies are kind of hesitant to actually start working with Nick because he's such a flake. He doesn't want to really work, he doesn't want to do this meet and greet kind of stuff, he doesn't want to go and travel, he just wants to sit on his ass and, you know, make his videos. He has huge influence and he's very popular, that's all true, but companies, you know, the high-level companies... They, they need, you know, hard workers and guys who don't switch companies so often. Another thing is, from what I heard, Nick was being paid $8,000 per month by Hostile. And the reason why he didn't want to continue his contract is because he was asking for twice as much. If he signs for another year, obviously Fuad declined and they stopped working right there and then. So right now Nick doesn't have a sponsor and he's 10 weeks out of Mr. Olympia. Who is going to be his next sponsor? We can only guess, maybe Mutant, maybe somebody else. But here is what Fuad had to say about this. Actually, somebody asked the question about his next sponsor. So let me show you this. Uh, Fuad, Fuad, rumors say Nick is with Yamamoto Nutrition. That wouldn't surprise me. Good for him. Listen, I don't, I don't know why people, this isn't a drama thing. It's a work thing. If Nick signs with somebody tomorrow, as long as he's happy, I'm happy for him. It just, he wasn't happy with us. So that's all there's to it. There's not a, there's no like uh, drama or hate or anything you guys are looking for. It doesn't exist. All right. So you heard it. Basically, somebody said that the rumor is that Nick is going with Yamamoto Nutrition, which I think would be amazing for Nick. Yamamoto is a huge company and they would definitely pay him well. I'm just not so sure if they would go 
with Nick because of his history. Me, personally, I would estimate Nick at about $15,000 per month. I think that's pretty realistic for his influence and for his popularity. And also, if he's willing to work harder, you know, to get a passport and to travel and to do more uh, meet and greet stuff, if he's actually willing to do that, I think 15 k is pretty reasonable. I don't think Hostile can afford that, but Yamamoto, I'm sure, can. So if Yamamoto signs him, that would be a huge thing for Yamamoto, and I think it would be a great thing for Nick, but we'll see if that's gonna happen. Basically, also, Fuad says that there is no bad blood, this is not personal, this is just business, that there is no drama which we are looking for, which I do not buy, I do not believe that. You guys heard what Nick had to say uh, after Fuad spoke to Nick Tregilly and said some things about him, so Nick was upset, Nick was kind of hurt. Uh, there is some bad blood, these guys are not really friends, close friends like they used to before, and they weren't only business acquaintances, they were more than that, they were kind of friends. Now, I think that friendship is over because they mixed it with business, it is what it is. Let me show you what else Fuad had to say on the situation. Where is Nick Walker? Uh, Nick Walker is probably training. Look, even if even if there was no issue with Nick Walker, Nick doesn't usually do these kind of things anyways. Ian, are you still practicing the splits? No, I'm sorry, I gave up on that. Man, freaking Ian again. He interrupted Fuad again. It really felt like uh, Fuad was going to talk a little bit more about Nick. But yeah, Ian wants to talk about whether he's doing splits or whatever. This is far more important, what happened between Nick and, and Fuad. So here, what Fuad said is basically, even if there was no issue, Nick wouldn't be doing this kind of stuff because he doesn't do that. So I get two things from this. So he says, if there was no issue, so there is an issue, <laughs> obviously. I mean, that's pretty obvious. But also he says, Nick wouldn't do stuff like this. And that sounded like, you can hear it in Fuad's tone, like he's kind of a little bit upset that Nick doesn't do more and he could do more. And even when Nick does the podcast, let's be honest, guys, he doesn't really speak a lot. I mean, he's not exactly the most uh, talkative person. He pretty much answers the questions when he's asked, but most of the time he's pretty silent. He does that just like a job. So maybe Nick wasn't really happy being on the podcast. There is that. That's possibility as well. It kind of seemed like that when you look back at it. While it was all fine, I never really thought about it, I thought it's just Nick, you know, he's kind of tired, he's probably training a lot, eating a lot, you know, he's focused on his uh, on his bodybuilding goals, and that's it, but now when I think about it, maybe Nick wasn't very happy that he had to do the podcast, maybe it was a part of his contract, maybe he wouldn't do that many podcasts if he wasn't signed by Hostile. Let me show you another part, the last thing that Fuad had to say. Fuad, can you explain what happened with Nick, please? Uh, let's just quickly go through it. Yeah. Um, Nick expressed a desire to not be at hostile, so I let Nick go. That's pretty much all. It's black and white. So that's it, guys. There you go. That's all Fuad had to say. He didn't really go into specifics, unfortunately. He says it's all black and white. Nick expressed that he doesn't want to stay in hostile anymore. And so Fuad let him go. And that's it. I'm sure there is a little bit more to it than all this. And I'm sure eventually some things will pop to the surface. And as soon as it happens, as soon as I hear anything or I find out anything, I will post it on my channel. So guys, for these kind of bodybuilding news and updates, subscribe to my channel. This is it for now as far as Fuad commenting Nick Walker situation. And here is Nick Walker right now, 10 weeks out. So guys, please tell me down below what do you think about this whole situation. And also tell me what do you think about Nick at 10 weeks out. Does he look a little bit harder to you than when he was working with Dom? Does he look smaller or bigger than last year? I think he looks a little bit bigger. Now that he lost some water, you can see that he didn't really progress as much as it seemed like he did. He definitely did make a lot of progress, I'm sure about that, but it kind of looked like he completely transformed. It looked like he gained 30 pounds of muscle, which is not very realistic. He's probably going to be like 5 to 7 pounds 
a bigger max, which is a huge gain for a guy at his level. And I hope he improved some details, like uh, maybe he grew his lateral head of the quadricep, maybe he grew his lats a little bit more, maybe he gained some uh, thickness and fullness in his chest. And uh, if he did all that, and if he comes very conditioned and he peaks properly, which I'm sure he will with, uh, with uh, Matt Jensen, he is going to do very well at the Mr. Olympia. In my opinion, he has the potential to be in top three. Yep, top three, even top two, maybe. Do you guys agree with me? If you don't, tell me down below in the comment section. Before we move on, I gotta tell you guys about this amazing pre-workout by the Old School Labs. It's called Vintage Blast. There is so many great flavors. It works like charm. It's mainly like pump and focus and endurance type of stuff. It has some caffeine as well, but it's not like loaded with caffeine. So it's kind of mild, let's say moderate in that sense. There is 250 mix of uh, caffeine, but there is a whole bunch of other ingredients and they are all high quality ingredients. So if you guys want a 15% discount just use the code even if you do that you're gonna help me and my channel the link is down below in the description thank you guys all right the next thing i wanted to talk about is legion sports fast results i'll go briefly over this because there is more to talk about in this video and this is something you guys pretty much expected you pretty much knew it yesterday i made a video about it your top two was obviously Tony Burton and Justin Rodriguez and obviously as you can see Tony Burton won very decisively if you ask me maybe Justin was a tad bigger but Tony was just hard as nails he was full he was round he was bubbly I will show you a couple of more photos you will see you will appreciate how impressive he actually was I gotta say the background <laughs> at this show was ridiculous First of all, Legion letters are really big and they are white, so this really destroys uh, what the physiques are going to look like. The, 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 it kills the silhouette, basically. It really takes away from the physiques a lot, so this is a big mistake. And the big drawing behind, yeah, it looks cool, but come on, this is a physique competition. At least put a black drape or black backdrop, whatever, to the point where the athletes are. Yeah, I know Jamie's a little bit tall, but at least to cover the physiques of these guys. And then above their heads, put whatever drawing you want or whatever. I mean, this was just stupid. It really takes away from the physiques. These guys are working so hard. They want high quality photos to have after the shows. Not like this. What the hell is this in the background? So unprofessional. I hate this. Anyways, Tony Burton looked amazing, Justin brought a pretty good shape, I gotta say, he didn't disappoint like he did at India, New York uh, earlier this year, he was amazing at, at Boston, at Arnold he was off, but one week later he tightened it up for Boston and he was very close to Bonac, not close enough of course, not, not really close like to content him, but like he was very firmly in that second, uh, New York and Indy he was a failure and now at this show he looked decent, he got enough points, uh, this year they changed the rules basically so only the top two uh, guys with, the, with the, the biggest uh, point score are going to the Mr. Olympia uh, that way and currently there are two guys ahead, there were two guys ahead of Justin and that's uh, Andrea Muzi and uh, Tio. So basically now Justin is going to be ahead of these two guys. I think Moose is going to do another show. <laughs> I know, I know. He did like all the shows this year. I don't think he's going to live for very long. Like how many times he dehydrated himself and did whatever the guys are doing to prep for the shows. What they are doing is not healthy. Not healthy as old. It's not sport. It's anti-sport. I know, I compete. And doing that many shows in a year... I don't know, man, you have to be a little bit crazy, not a little bit, you need to be quite crazy to do that stuff, like, you need to, be, something needs to be wrong with you, I wouldn't dare, honestly, my life is precious to me, but whatever, so, I'm pretty sure Justin is gonna go to the Mr. Olympia, and as far as Jamie Johal, as you can see, he looks very impressive here, and me personally, I'm a big fan of Jamie Johal, because he's so special, he's so different, but when I saw the pre-judging, I thought there is no way this guy is going to be the winner, and I, I was pretty sure he's not gonna be top three, I thought maybe fourth, but apparently Stanimal edged him out somehow, I mean Stanimal, he, he comes from man's physique, <laughs> that's right, not so long ago he was doing man's physique, then classic, then 212, and then the open, and every year he gets bigger, and now he beat Jamie Johal, I think this fourth place finish here is a huge success for him, and once again, Tony Burton brought it, fullness, conditioning, the pop, the polish, 
back was amazing, glutes were in, he improved so, so much, he looked great at this show, he deserves to go to that Mr. Olympia. Now let's switch to another topic, I mentioned Michal Krizo yesterday in my video, but very briefly, I wanna talk about this guy a little bit more. Not too much, I'm not gonna talk about his conditioning or whatever, I just wanted to talk about his back a little bit more, because that's something a lot of people were doubtful that Michal Krizo is gonna have great back, you know, and um, a lot of pros, a lot of pros as well were uh, speculating that he's going to have very weak back when he stands next to the other top pros. Here in this Olympia Amateur show, I gotta say his back looked amazing. Now, we all know he has so many great body parts, like his arms are one of the best arms in the world. They challenge those of Nick Walker. He has great shoulders. He has a great uh, shoulder width, you know, long clavicles. Uh, he has pretty good legs from the front. He has small glutes, that's his weakest probably body part. Uh, his hamstrings are good, but they need to be defined more. And his back was the question mark, so I gotta say his back is good. Yep, it's good, it's not bad. It's not, I don't know, outstanding maybe, but you wouldn't say this back is small. Come on guys, by any means, this is not a small back. And back, if you guys know this, back is the kind of muscle that looks more impressive when it is shredded, like way more impressive. Me personally, when I'm prepping, I don't even look at my back until I'm really in, in shape because that's only, it's only then when you can see how much gains you actually put on. In the, in the off season, you can check your back thickness, like how, how thick you look from the side. But when you do a back double in the off season with all that fat on, you can't really see anything. You can see the width in the back lat spread, but as far as details in the uh, back double, that's something you only see when you are shredded, and uh, Michal is not shredded here, come on. He's in decent shape, decent enough to win this show, and he won this show easily, check this out. Like, you know, it was kind of funny that he had to do this show, I mean, yeah, I understand it's formality, he needs to win a show to win a pro card, I personally think they should have just gave him that pro card. I'm sure a lot of pros like Ian Wallier would complain about it because they had to do a show to win, but come on, we are talking about the best IFBB elite pro competitor, like he's the Mr. Olympia in the second best federation, so why would he have to go through something like this to win a pro card? Again, I understand it's formality, but it's kind of a pity for the other guys. Look at these other guys, like they... <laughs> They, they can't stand next to him, I mean, he, he completely destroyed them, like, maybe they wanted some cool photos from this show, at least, or something like that, they, maybe their families came to watch them, and he, he embarrassed them here, he embarrassed them, this wasn't fair to them, so he looked, of course, much, much better than everybody else here, he looks like a, a top pro, and the other guys next to him look like amateurs, which they will stay after this show, they won't turn pro, because he got that pro card, as you can see, his conditioning is decent, like, it's okay, he doesn't have to be super conditioned to win this kind of show, he could have been worse, like, I think he uh, came this condition because of social media, because he knew he was gonna be criticized, he could have came worse than this and, and won this show, now check his back once again, and the glutes, like, yeah, his glutes are his weakest body part, and his back is not his most impressive body part, but he's not bad from behind, he's not bad, come on guys, look at this, this is not a bad shot, I think this beats guys like Ian Valier. yep, yep, me personally, from what I'm seeing right here, let's say an improved version of Mikhail Krizo if he gets conditioned for the Mr. Olympia after he wins Prague Pro, I have him potentially in my top 7, something like that, I think he can be 7th or better, I think many people are underestimating this guy because, guys, he looks like a freak. This guy is a absolute freak. And do not make a mistake and think he's not going to bring better conditioning uh, for, for Mr. Olympia and his pro show. Because look at him here. This is much better conditioning than the, the amateur show that he just did. Uh, as you can see, his glutes were smaller back then. I think he improved his glutes. I think they are bigger now. I think his back looks better. So I think if he gets, not in this condition, maybe he can get in this condition for Prague Pro and win that show. I think he would win it. But for Mr. Olympia, he's, he needs to be sharper. And I'm sure he can do that. I'm sure he didn't really try super hard for these shows because 
again he's so superior of course all these guys here in IBB Elite Pro are much better than those guys in in uh, Mr. Olympia Amateur but still he is dominant even here so guys go ahead and tell me what do you think about Michal Krizio and tell me what you think about his back and glutes do you think he is going to look decent in those shots in back shots and can he beat guys like Ian Wallier and the other guys in the top seven and where exactly do you think he's going to place in the Mr. Olympia if he wins Prague Pro which uh, obviously I'm sure he will do and since we are mentioning Ian Wallier this is him right now at 10 weeks out at 275 so he is big man this guy is a monster pretty much and as you can see he's very very lean very lean for 10 weeks out he's ahead of his game for some reason and he talked about this on the podcast that some reason the reason is because he prefers to do it that way he prefers to be ready ahead of time then he can eat big into the show he says if he needs to suffer like weeks before the show, his look suffers because of that. So he needs to be ready in time and then just cruise into the show. And that's the way he looks best. Me personally, when I'm prepping, that's like the part that I hate the most. I hate maintaining. If I need to bring conditioning, I like to push very hard. I want to see the scale go down. And that's, why, that's how I can do it. If I need to cruise man that's tough but uh, Ian is a special breed like this guy he doesn't enjoy food <laughs> I know how funny that sounds but that's what he says he doesn't care about the taste of food yeah yeah he, he's an alien like this guy is very very weird like there aren't many people like Ian Wallier and those things like that for example really make him special and make him a champion he has some structural flaws some limitations but he's a workhorse and every year he improves and at Vancouver he was he was insane he looked crazy and he was really heavy and uh, now I'm sure he's going to look better I think he didn't he held back a little bit he didn't really bring his absolute best conditioning for Vancouver which he is going to do for the Mr. Olympia even though this Mr. Olympia lineup is going to be one of the, one of the craziest uh, ever I think he's going to do very well like you know top seven top eight in the world would be a huge achievement still in this lineup and I don't think he's going anywhere far away from that spot whatever you guys think though tell me down below in the comment section if you enjoyed this video guys please give me a thumbs up and for more videos about bodybuilding and stuff like this subscribe to my channel guys thank you so much for watching all the best and bye bye